Okay guys, welcome back to another video. This is the 3.2 diesel Ford Ranger engine that we had diagnosed and Alan actually took the engine out and he was going to go on it but I'm going to tell you Alan have a lot of stuff on now and I'm thinking I'm taking on this. This is my normal generic lift in here and there's a gap there so look, lo and behold this is what I am going to tackle. What way am I going to tackle? Just sitting on an engine stand there and I'm going to disassemble. We're changing five pistons in it. That's the, the core of what we're going to add. Other bits and pieces that are going to be changed, I suppose, timing chains and stuff, but this is only all in the build up to it and the disassembly and the reassembly process, okay? Um, what am I going to do? And it's all going to be taken apart on what I call my disassembly tray. So, oily quarter of an IBC tank or whatever it is, the side of it. But this is going to be taken apart and all my bits and pieces are going to be lobbed over here. What have I got? I have a uh, bar of bits and pieces. I have five pistons here. Five injectors there, head bolts, big end bearings. I think, I don't know if I have too many or do I meant to have two packets? Maybe there's a certain amount of them. Um, head gasket, head set. Over here then we have a time and chain cover, a rear crank oil seal, and then a front crank oil seal. So there are the bar to bits and pieces that we have sitting around here, and we're hoping that we start tearing this thing apart, getting wire and loom turbos, all that kind of stuff off it. Have done a four cylinder 2.2 on before, but never done a 3.2. I haven't done pistons in, but we're going a little bit deeper on this occasion. Okay, so this is the tear down process. Okay, see. I'm starting to do my little bit of a tear down. I'm at the pulling off the viscous fan off the front and a couple of water hoses, crank pulley. That's simple and easy. There's only three bolts in it. Uh, all the inner belt off it. I'm thinking I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave on what I can on it. So the starter motor Alan has on here, engine mountains and stuff, AC, I don't know if I have to take it off or not. I'm going to leave on anyway what I can. So at this point in time, we're doing, coming down to time and chain, cover disassembly. Any bits and pieces I have, I've thrown over here. My wiring loom was first. Then on the way out, merging out the way, I have my viscous fan and bits of other water hoses toddling out the way. Um, yeah, we're just, we're rolling on here, just pulling off some bits and pieces to try and see where I end up. I'm not hugely confident with that engine stand because it's a big heavy engine so I have just an axle stand and a little bit of block just supporting it's not holding it's not even in the middle but it is supporting I was going to put it out the very front here but I knew I was going to take the crank pulley off it so I didn't so we're going to keep on going I'm going to put off the alternator maybe exhaust manifold turbos stuff like that at this point on this side and we're starting to get in then time chain head hopefully it's not going to be so bad okay guys have a few bits and pieces pulled off of this thing um Again, they're all going over to me. Tray, timing cover is just about to come off. Here now, I have all the bolts pulled out of it. And we're getting down to the basics. We're getting down to the general gist of a head. And relatively easy to take off. I have to say the wearing loom is not nice, but other than that, it's quite handy. So I'm hoping that I'm going to pull off the timing cover, pull out a few head bolts, maybe cam box, whatever, off up the top. And at that stage, then I'm, yeah, getting into piston then. Okay, guys. Timing chain is coming off. I'm a bit of a devil for my own marks. There's a little pin in there and there in the camshaft. I'm just throwing my own marks on the pump and on the crank. To get back to the actual tensioner, you put a little screwdriver in behind that little tab there and just push it back. And I then just put in a screwdriver and push back the tensioner here. And yeah, pin in then to hold it in place. Oh, not gone flying, um, but yeah. Chain is coming off. We have now. the head bolts. There's 10 or 12 or whatever. Cam box pulled off. Cam box thrown over on my little tray over there. And two here, two here, two here, two here. It's in and out and in and out all the way along, okay? One or two over here. So the next little bit is going to be me pulling the head off of this thing. And that's where it's going to get interesting. What is the ticking noise coming from? Uh, couldn't, I couldn't find it on line. As it, you know, I kind of use YouTube a bit. Turn off my light and I'll talk to you. As you know, I use YouTube a bit, but I couldn't find that. And there was one man done this job and he kept saying it was a piston, it was a piston, it was a piston. But I'm going to show you the piston that's damaged, okay? So I'm going to pull this head off, two handed job, and we'll have a look at it in a minute. We're thinking there's three of them damaged with three little spud marks on each side all the way around. So we'll know the next up in minutes, okay? This will be pretty cool and pretty interesting. Hey guys, well, I've pulled the head off it and it's a serious <laughs> moment, okay? What I was seeing in part one. I believed to be three holes around the side. 
And I actually, weirdly, I could see it here. I couldn't see it here. I could see it here. I couldn't see it. Whatever cylinders, I can't remember what ones I was in. But anyway, my pistons, what I thought was going to be damaged is not. It's absolutely perfect. The Honourable Mr. Dave, David Sterling says he likes real world. Well, here's one for you, Dave. This is real world. This is where you open it up and you go, ah, what, 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 the, what am I doing? Anyway, so I'm wrong. And the reason I went in here, I'm wrong. I'm going to show you now, hands up, hands up in the air, my test long boroscope. And there did a little piece of a lens in here break recently, but I ran around it with a little toothpick clean it and have a new one ordered. But the long and short of it was I seen bits of glass or something. Now, when I was turning the thing, the marks were staying in the same place. So you think if it was glass, it was going to be moving with me. But anyway, neither here they are. I'm going to show you what I think I'm up against. Okay, number one cylinder. Okay, number, we'll go back to number five. Is that doing it? Can you see that? Now I do, and I have seen movement on these yokes, which wouldn't, or at least normally wouldn't bother me, but now I have to find something because I am... In theory, up somewhere without a paddle. Is that it? That was causing our, our problem. There is no marks on the pistons anyway, as I thought. But I'm going to go down. I'm going to show you what maybe I see here. I have kind of score marks there. I don't hear. I do here, so number one is good, number two is slightly scored, and number three is more scored. One second, I get it, get the screw to turn the engine. But the long and short of it is, sorry, I'm gonna spin all the way around. You can see, if I keep the two of them down somewhat, one second, if I get a cloth. Mm, I don't ever be clothed. Okay. There's our marks on the side of number one, two, and three. Is that what's creating our, our banging and our knocking noise? If we go down, look, she's perfect, that's number one. Number four is coming. It looks good as well on that side. So the same specific side that we have the marks on number two and three, a little bit four yet. I don't want to have another number five. I'm going to keep spinning. I'm only spinning here. So year, as I said there, this is real raw garage life. Where you're like, ooh, but that has to be it. I'm going honing a cylinder, two cylinders, and I'm going to put in my pistons which are thrown on the ground over here, and hopefully it's going to change that. Now you can hear that, can you? Alan is pulling the car, so it's noisy. You hear that slap? Someone spoke about piston slap, but I've never, never come across it. I don't know, we're gonna get in this, I'm gonna pop in a new piston in here and just see what happens and what way it feels. Maybe the same here. The joys with lads. Okay guys, I've just popped another piston in on top of this one while it's still in situ. There is, it's a lot tighter. There's still a slight bit of movement there. I don't know if you can see that. It does feel a lot tighter. I don't have any of the side to side movement here. I can push it down a slight little bit. But I can't do one hand anyway. You get a piston out of it and see. Okay, guys. Just had a pop and a piston up out of it. So we have score marks down the side of the piston, sorry, down the side of the cylinder, and then my piston, that side is good, but spin it around. Here we have a lot of scoring on the piston itself. Now I don't know why that has happened, is it due to carbon buildup or 
over fueling from the injectors because I was looking for burn marks on the side of the pistons here, but I haven't seen that, but this is what I found, okay? I'm going to assume we're going to have it on both. Now, what I don't know is the right way to go at this point in time is do I, does this need to be sent off to be rear reboard and oversized pistons put into it? Or do I just give it a hone, see where we go with my other pistons and should that in theory fix? A lot, I, I'm suggesting it's a good bit worn off of that piston there, which in theory would be given a, now this one is kind of scored as well. The rest of them are good, good, bad, bad, good, good. That is the actual piston out of that hole. Uh, we'll, we'll go and I'll hone it and I'll see where we're standing and maybe a hone might be enough on this. There's marks, discover marks there, but there's not actual any actual wear. I suppose we have a, a hard metal and a soft metal. So in theory, the soft metal should wear, but the hard metal in theory, or in what I would, my experience, shouldn't really wear too much. But I'm hoping that if we run a honer around it for a while, that these marks will clear up and that a new standard size piston will do the job. Because that's what I have here on the ground. And I'm hoping that I can roll on and start reassembling this thing. If not, I'm probably more detailed tear down of all this stuff to get it off, get it honed, sorry, get it reboard. And then I have to reorder oversized pistons. So I'm hoping that if I hone this thing, it's going to be good enough that that's caused my problem, the softer metal that has worn, and that new pistons in there will do the job. Fingers crossed. I'll give it a hone. Won't happen today. It's probably going to happen tomorrow morning. And we'll see where we end. Okay, guys, I've just got my cylinder of hone tool on this thing. And I'm going to say, I'm actually pretty chuffed. That was where I had the score marked. And it actually feels very, very good. My light was in the way there. And this is just the very, very top of the, where the rings would stop. Traveling, so it's just that part of it there. That's that thing. And maybe, potentially, someone would say, hey, you should be Reboring this thing, but it just doesn't look too bad. As I said, that's where I was concerned, but that does feel really good. I'm thinking we're going to go this cylinder as well. Needs to be done. Probably give them all a run, but I'm thinking we're we're done. This is going to fix. Yay! That's what I'm going to suggest anyway. Could be wrong, people could say, hey, that's not the thing to do, but that's, at this point in time, this is my own judgment I'm driving on, and you know me, I'll do what I feel is correct, and this is what I feel is correct for me and our the engine at this point in time. I don't think she needs to be disassembled more and bored out, I think it's fine. It actually feels lovely. Hmm, okay, right. I'm gonna start getting a few pistons together, get a new one in instead of this thing. Okay, guys, I've popped out the other five, four, sorry, pistons. There's a score marking on the side of the cylinder. It actually, I believe, I believe it's kind of a residue of aluminium that's down there rather than a mark on the cylinder. Too much. The rest of them are good, spotless. Bad, that's the one we just honed. Good, and good. I'm gonna hone these and see what way they, they turn out for us, okay? Okay, I'm after honing all the cylinders. Well, we had our scuffs, our score marks there, only just me with a cloth and stuff. It actually feels very good now, I have to say. Again, only thinners I put on a cloth here and just sent in to clean them up. And the two problem areas were these ones, and right now there was a little residue of aluminium stuck here on the side of that one, but it is gone, and as I said there, I don't want to go any hair on it. It is bang on on both the ones that I had a question mark on. So look, it's time for this thing. I'm going to start popping in a couple of pistons and see where we end up. Okay, guys, I'm just putting this back together, but I'm probably conscious that maybe you don't know what a cylinder honer is. A cylinder honer is just 
one of those things, I didn't actually show it. Will I be able to lift it up without breaking anything? It basically just, yeah, sits in like that, okay? That's all, it just polishes the inside of the cylinders. All very simple. Them things are very, very easy and cheap to get, okay? All it does is polishes up the bore rather than actually grinding it or making it bigger. It's only just polishing, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, I have fitted in my pistons, big end bearings gone in there. My, what do I call that thing? Crank box, I don't know, the lower part of the actual engine, engine section is that have been fitted on. And my pistons, all my new pistons are popped into place, numbered again and all pointing forward and doing their job. Engine is on its side and turning around. It turns actually relatively, I wouldn't say relatively easy, but no, I'm not going to do it with one hand anyway without it. That's something to drive it, I was only sticking a screwdriver in, in here, but it, it spins away the finest. Um, cylinders and all that are oiled up and big end bearings after getting a knob. A little knob of oil in there, they're torqued. All going back together. One little timing chain sitting down here. I actually got a new timing chain kit which is sitting on the ground, but I, I didn't have, it's actually sitting over there, where it is. But it didn't have the oil pump timing chain but anyway neither here or there look i don't believe they fail in these things so the main timing chain is going to be the the one we're going to be worried about at this point um yeah getting there now we're going to keep on motoring on and get it assembled it's as one of the it. deepest engines i've probably went into at uh well wouldn't say recently not always but this is one of the deepest i've gone into you would be a little bit ooh, is it all going to work and is it going to go back in days later and after days of disassembly and reassembly um yeah, look, we found a, a big obvious problem. So the big obvious problem was our pistons scored the knobs of aluminium on the side of the block. So, yeah, don't anyone think that this is a light undertaking, thinking that, oh, he's some man. I'm not some man. I'm just taking a chance on it. Told the man I'll do it. Here we are. We're doing it. So we'll keep on going and see where it ends up, boys, right? Okay, guys, I don't know. All my five pistons in. I don't know if I showed that already. Have the base plate thing on. Some carrier, whatever the hell they call it, I don't know. Sump was bolted on. My timing chain, the little small one I showed you for around the oil pump and my oil pump assembly fit together in here. I was given a run of sandpaper and stuff. I have my cylinder head here cleaned up and ready to go back together. And then my gasket is sitting here on the ground. So that is going to be over to, over, over to that in the next few minutes. Okay guys, I have a head, or the head, back on it. She's um, starting to get, or starting to look like an engine again. Cleaned up the surface, new head gasket in it, squares down. Um, original time marks starting to come back together. I'm only using my little pen ones that we saw just for a guide while assembling. And then we can re-do our original marks when the time comes. So we're, yeah, look, we're getting back together. Head is an awkward pattern of torquing down these things. It's 24 or something bolts on them and there's 12 big in the middle and 12 smaller ones on the outside and a whole heap of stages to go through and torque. And look, you'd have to figure that out for yourselves, but it's too long for me even to put up. Um, and then the rest of the cam box. Sorry, yeah, the cam box on top holding down the camshafts and the rockers settled back down. So it's all starting to come back together a little bit for me, so... Fingers crossed, yeah, we're starting to get on the home run here. Okay, guys, timing chain is going on. New timing chain kit. Executive decision, don't like, just don't like them. Not going to replace them. Try them up against there. Pulleys are perfect. Um, just preferred the other ones. Don't know why, just preferred to look them. Uh, don't have, there's a special locking tool that sits around here and grabs on somewhere out here for locking the crank. Don't have it. So because of that, I'm going with my own original marks that I had in here. My, I didn't pull the pin out of my time and chain yet, but I have my pins in here, semi-lined up. All little guides and stuff are changed. I have markings on my pump, but I don't think they're needed at all. Time for the, oh, can we get it out? The pin to come out at this point in time. Still have my little floating pulleys loose, as you can see. At this point, once I'm happy with where that is, I'm now going to line up my little pins in here 
and then I'm going to lock my three thirteens here. I'm not. It isn't that I'm not. I look. I don't have that tune. I'm a relatively small garage in the middle of a small village, and I don't. I may not do one of these again for another. Gosh, five years. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But anyway. I'm not going to go off. I'm not going to leave a delay of trying to get parts and I'm not going to expend 300 euros, whatever it may be, for this time and tool. I'm actually just going to drive on and not put in, not use the OE marks. I've never had any issue with it now. I'm just, any time I've ever done this, if I'm using my meticulous mindset to do what I believe is right, it all works out. That's kind of it. I'm not going to fuss over what I don't have to fuss with. Time to start getting in pins, line up these things, getting on my time and covers. Okay, the new time and cover is fitted on. Crank pulley back on. Viscous fan on. Went around and I stuck on my turbo and a few bits and pieces all in are stuck on there. And we're starting to get it back together and starting to make it look like a, a lump of an engine again. So, yeah, maybe a couple of bits of wiring looms. I have the rocker cover sitting on up here. Uh, a couple of bolts fell out and some of them are like, like that. I need to make sure I get them in the right place so I haven't spread it down yet. Guys, well, a different train of thought on this thing. On, when I'm on my reassembly process, EGR cooler, as I said there, was faulty. I'm just proving the concept to myself. I've also ordered an EGR valve and I have an EGR, sorry, EGR cooler. I have an EGR cooler sitting here, but it is different. Now, before I go after and try to pinpoint the right one and make sure it's right, all I'm doing, and we have done this, I think Alan has shown it one day on one of his ones, I have the inlet and the outlet. Let me take it out. I have the inlet and the outlet, which you can see right there, blocked. Okay. We sink it down in a bucket of water. Okay. And that, my blowgun then that's just connected to it, I'm only going to send in a bit of pressure in here and we should see bubbles somewhere. I'm going to slow down it. It isn't, it isn't coming. You can see the bubbles coming from internal in the actual cooler when the pressure is there, okay? But put big pressure on it, it leaks out around the white pipe as well. But at this point, you can see that it's actually coming from the core of the cooler. Just before I actually order, I'm giving another little shot of air. Just before I go and um, order the correct fitting one, okay? Just to prove the cooler is wrong. Okay, guys, I'm at the pulling this thing out of... Um, out of the hole or the corner that I was working on it over there. What am I doing? I, I know that the oil pumps and these things break and or fail if there's oil left out of them for a long time. So what I've done after I've reassembled was I've span it or spun the engine via a ratchet is all in a socket on the front. I've no injectors in it at this point in time. So I've no compression. So it's easy to turn. And I've spun and 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 spun. I have oil inside in the engine, so I filled the actual engine with oil. I put in seven litres or so of oil in it, just enough to, you know, get stuff down around the sump and make sure that everything is okay. So there's oil in it, and I spun, 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 trying to pump that oil up around and where it should be. What am I doing now? I'm actually just trying to, again, avoid anything failing, but... <clears throat> I just have a little snap-on remote starter and I'm actually at the connecting my booster pack just up and onto the engine. And luckily for me, the starter motor will bolt on here. I have fitted my flywheel and stuff on the back and all I'm doing is just turning the engine, giving the spin over for a while just to see, you know, to try and continue my lubrication of the pump, flooding of the pump, I suppose, with oil so I have no problems when I turn the key. That's all I'm... That's all I'm basically trying to do here is just get engine oil up and pumped around everywhere and everything so it will... Um... Hopefully just lubricate it so I don't run the risk of any oil getting drained out of the pump and it's snapping in two halves. Very weak design, very bad design. So look, we're giving another... Right, only another silly little thing, but that's what I'm Okay, doing. fast view of injectors gone in, engine cranking with injectors in it. Doesn't sound too bad. Time for it to go in. 
just fitting the new EGR cooler assembly onto this before we start getting our setup to go back in. They're an expensive yoke, these things are. These things are dealer only, I could get them. Um, I could get them on eBay, 300 pounds or something like that, but then it'll be a week or two of delay. So I had my engine rebuilt at this point in time, so I ordered it at a dealer, got it overnight, and yeah, been stuck on, but it's 800 and I paid 880 euros for it. And some kind of surcharge involved in it for the old unit, but 880 euros I've paid for it. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but there's a Jeep out there running. Alan is at the putting the engine back in. I was with him for a little while to put it together, but we walk out on the first crank I can hear on. I don't want to have any tick, 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 tick noise, but we are up and running, so we'll go out and have a look. Alan from Jaysia inside the cabin. She's up and running, so I'm going to get a couple of miles done on her and see where we go, okay? Get a bat. Nail biting stuff there for a couple of minutes while it's, um, you know, you're cranking and you're query, weary of the oil pump and all that, but she's running. Sounds okay. <laughs> okay, guys. It's a uh, new morning. Our Engine and stuff is back in, front is back on the car. She's all in theory back and complete, but it's not a good day. And why is it not a good day? Started the car, ran the car, and Alan hadn't starting, but now, gonna turn the key in a second, it's stone cold. Um, we had Bubble, 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 coming up here. Thermostat wasn't opening. Don't know, it didn't, it didn't get driven in here, but where are we at? Where we're at is, there's a breeze there. Where we're at is, gosh, potentially, we all get them. We all get them jobs that go around. So I'm not going to not show you what I'm seeing or doing or what's happening or the bucket of poo-poo that I'm in right now. Ooh. Hindsight. I believed when I was taking the head off of my video that I was going to see tops of pistons burnt. I didn't. I blimped my camera. Then when I had a part, I saw the cylinder scored. And then I was like, hey, we found something. Start thinking. Also, I showed an EGR cooler here, gone. Format for myself, I wouldn't say format, but I have done it. If I've taken a head off, and not taken a head off due to overheating or head gasket issues, I have reinstated that head without skimming it. On this job, I've reinstated the head without skimming it. I thought the cylinder score was from maybe injector and the, skit, the piston getting knocked from side to side. I think the cylinder score was from this thing getting reddened. Now I did, this did enter my head. When I was this, or sorry, assembling my head over here, my engine, I said, ooh, cooler gone. Possibly ran without water. If it ran without water, did it drive it to the point that it actually nearly heat seized and then made the pistons stick in the actual cylinders? that's what I'm thinking I did think it back then I didn't prior think of it I had the engine rebuilt when I thought of it and I started saying it to Alan and Daniel that's here I said could this be because of heat just all makes sense hindsight is a great thing at this point in time I think I'll take a head off of this yoke again skim the head what I don't want I'm, I'm kind of here and I'm saying uh, uh, <laughs> Please don't be saying, oh, you should have known that. Oh, if I knew that, I would have done that. I don't Look, I'm only telling you what I'm seeing. I'm in a position now where I have to do it again. Uh, not a good position. But I'm telling you and I'm showing you. Could have just done it and said nothing. But I am saying and showing it. So maybe I'll do the engine in there. Do, sorry, do the head in there. Something that I'm going to think about. I'll give it a start and see. So yeah, just please, in the comments, don't be saying, oh, yeah, you would have done this, oh, we are better than you. Oh, look, look, what they call them is keyboard warriors. Please don't be a keyboard warrior. 
you can give me a rub, <coughs> by all means, but I'm not going to have a debate about how I should have, would have, could have. As I said, our hindsight is a great thing. But on this one, look, I'm going to... Engine is back in. We have reservoir there. It has only done about, I believe, two or three miles, Alan says. In there. That isn't just airflow or air pockets or anything like that. It is combustion getting out by the side of a head. That interior, as I said there, I should have skimmed. Never joined the dots at the start. I was too focused on the wear, the wear and the cylinder score and all that kind of crack. It does happen. EGR cooler we've replaced. It's not the cooler. It is a head gasket. It isn't a head gasket. It's the head needing to be skimmed. Anyway, look, for this one, it's not a good one. And I'm going ripping it apart again. So I'm probably going to have stayed at point, uh, part two. What this is doing is I'm taking the brunt of the, the crap that's coming my way in order to get ye guys, whoever may watch this, to avoid it, okay? Whether you're in Bangladesh or Waterford in the road or Dublin up the road, whatever, England, wherever it may be. This is hopefully going to avoid ye getting it. Now, I'm not saying that everyone won't go and... Skim ahead before putting it on anyway. But what I do notice sometimes on jobs, if they're bigger and they grow in stature and your diagnosis is coming from point to point to point to point to point and there's another bit wrong all the way along the way, sometimes you can get sidetracked because of the enormity of the jobs run. My engine rebuild was a positive. Skimming the head, in hindsight, was a very negative. Anyway, for this one, boys, please like and subscribe. If my stupidity is any good... Fire, and I'll talk to you on the next cartoon, okay? Peter Kennedy, Kennedy's Garage, signing out. Talk to you, guys.